A very warm welcome everyone, my name is Nick. Now I hope you're comfortable, because in the next 25 minutes or so, there's going to be a lot of Spectrum games that race past your eyes, yes? Welcome to channel N Jenkin, where this time we're going to look at the ZX Spectrum games we've reviewed so far, running through from 301 to 350. Are you ready? Well here we go! And we kick off with Ad Astra, a fairly competent shooter, heavily influenced by Star Wars. You must first avoid asteroids and then um, destroy different enemy waves. Your ship you control looks a lot like a mini Star Destroyer and there's TIE fighters that come at you and other ships. It's quite tricky, it's all about how long you survive. Survive a certain amount of time and then a different wave of aliens will come at you. It's quite original this, the animation is good and it's quite smooth. Also, I would highly recommend Ad Astra. Miami Cobra moves quite fast, um, I would say it's on a par with Chase HQ this one, moves quite quickly as I say, you have to go through various checkpoints before uh, the time runs out, you see that ticking up in the top, and when you go to different stages the screen does change colour quite quickly, I wouldn't have been disappointed with this back in the day, it's off a lot of people's radars this one, but Miami Cobra, a, a game that moves quite smooth, quite quick, with good uh, sprites. Meteoroids, for me it's not as good as other asteroid clones such as Meteor Storm or Planetoids. It's very basic and the uh, the frame rate isn't quite there, but it does represent asteroids quite well. I don't like that shooting gun which is quite solid rather than just different dots, but it would have kept a kid entertained for a certain amount of time. Do check out Meteor Storm or indeed Planetoids, as I say I believe those two are better examples of conversions of the arcade game. Watch it. Pinball or Pinball Wizard. Now quite clever this game in the fact that it's two pinball tables alongside each other. Pinball tables tend to be quite narrow and they've solved it here by putting two next to each other but they're identical. So you've got four flippers here and the idea is you must get the ball up the top there to spell out the word Sagittarian. In some quarters it was called Sagittarian Pinball for that sort of reason and they are the makers of the game. Ball physics are quite good for pinball, uh, it's acceptable this one. Neighbours, do you want to be a neighbour? Now this is based on the Australian soap Neighbours, which I first watched with Kylie Minogue and Jason Donovan in. It's got nothing to do with the show at all. What essentially it is, is you on a skateboard doing various courses, presumably against other characters in the actual um, show. Um, I don't know how they got away with calling this Neighbours, but there you go. Those sort of things happened in Spectrum days. Is it a good game? Well, not really. It's quite frustrating. Now this is a good game, Rainbow Islands, the sequel to Bubble Bobble, which I'm yet to a review on the channel. But you control this guy who can fire rainbows out of his butt, and uh, by getting to the top of the screen and collecting all the fruit and stuff, you get to the next level. It gets trickier as you go on, but you would expect that in these sort of games. A good conversion from the arcades, good music at the start, it plays somewhere over the rainbow, and you've got to be a good fan of that really. A really good cracking game. 3D Paul. This game is attempting a lot on the ZX Spectrum. I don't think it really gets away with it. Different angles of the table, but the balls are quite confusing. It's quite hard to line stuff up. You play against the computer. It's clever, but no, no fun at all. Um, decide whereabouts in the ball you want to hit it. Uh, line up your shot, select your power, and then hope for the best, really. Uh, very confusing. If you play this for a while, you're going to get a bit of a headache. Some people would have liked it if they could get used to the colour scheme. I wasn't so keen. Aquaplane. Now, this is a really, really cool game. An original too. You control that speedboat there, towing a windsurfer behind you. You must avoid all the obstacles. There's a bit of inertia there. Next level, you've got to go around uh, windsurfers, and then there's some deadly sharks. This is quite addictive, this one. A classic game. Moves quite well too. Love the colours on it. There's lots to like about this game. Collision detection is bang on perfect and it will frustrate you and entertain you in equal measure. Astro Blaster uh, moves really fast this game. One of the many um, Space Invaders type clones on the ZX Spectrum which we've viewed quite a lot in this 50 uh, uh, stint. This one moves quite well. Uh, I'm quite impressed with it. It's not my favourite one, I'd have to say, but you can't go far wrong with this, with this one. Asteroid Storms as well, uh, and that set makes it different from many of the other ones. Attention to detail is pretty good. 
EastEnders, another terrible soap conversion. EastEnders is based in London uh, from the TV show on the BBC. It's pretty scary. It's pretty hard to exit rooms. You get weird mini games like this where you must have feed this screaming baby that seems to be the length of a full bed milk. Uh, there's odd other games. The phone rings, which annoys you. Uh, there's the pub and other sort of mini games to do, but it's not clear how to progress and it's not much fun either. It's a weird, bizarre dream, I think. Grand Prix Driver, probably the worst Grand Prix game I've ever played on any system ever. Collision detection is terrible. When you die, the car bursts into flames, if indeed it is a car. And this death sequence is way, way too long as well. It really rubs it in. Go anywhere near a car or the side of the road, your car will explode. And, um, you know, some people will got the hang of this. With the box flashed either left or right, there's some indication where your car needs to go. But well, I didn't get on with it at all. Microball, another great pinball conversion. Um, not based on any real life table, this one. But the ball moves very, very fast when it gets going. So you've got to keep your wits about you. A few things to do, getting the ball in the... Um, in the left lane there at the top there spell out ABC it'll keep you going for a while get bonuses there a nice fun game you only get one table on micro ball but you know it's it's good good ball physics quite predictable but moves so fast Mike Reed's pop quiz built off the engine of question of sport if you've seen that one already but it's got a lot of questions in its memory banks you control either one of two teams we must answer questions in a quiz type thing and get the most points by the end there's different sort of levels Mike Reed was a DJ it plays quite well if you're into quizzes great if you play it over and over again for months you're gonna run out of questions because you can only fit a certain amount on a tape but what it aims to do it does quite well Fred is a sort of like platform game where you control this archaeologist Indiana Jones type character and you must get gradually to the top of each one of these pyramids and then finally make your escape. There's ghosts in here and nasties to get. You have a gun with limited amount of shots, ropes that can go up and down and that's pretty much a maze exploration game which Spectrum did really well. It's 8-bit glory, did have a sequel called Sir Fred which at the time of recording I haven't come to yet but I'm sure we will do at some stage. Fantastic Voyage, based on the uh, 50s film, I think, of the same name, uh, which Inner Space was based off as well, a film in the 80s. But you control this diver, you're in the body of the president, and you must um, rid all diseases and find um, three pieces of a ship because you've been miniaturised, and then make your way and escape. If this president is Donald Trump, I'm not sure I will bother, but uh, it's not an accurate representation of the body, but it's great fun and quite original too. Robocop 2, your move, creep. I'm not as good as the original game, but there's quite a bit to like here. It's very, very difficult. If you're a fan of Ro Ro Robocop, you'll probably like this one. The animation is good. Uh, I'm convinced it does look like a Robocop, but very, very tricky. You need quite a few goes on this one. You have to complete each stage before the time runs out. See so your energy level in the top right there. There is Robocop 3, which I still haven't come to yet, but there's still time. The classic Tetris, this one was by Mirasoft. There's quite a lot of different versions of Tetris about. This is one of the better ones. I don't need to explain Tetris to you, do I? Lots of shapes go down the screen. I'm going to anyway. You complete a line and then that all blanks out for super bonus points. Uh, if the screen fills up with shapes, you've got nowhere left to go, then that is the end. There we go, we've done a line there. I am the best, am I? Maybe. Was this going to be a line? Get excited. Boof. Astro Ball, a really inventive game this one, I couldn't find the cassette box cover, but you control this bouncing ball, you must go on different levels without falling down, and collect all the coins on the level and then make your escape up the top. Oop, there we go, good stuff. Nice original game, didn't know this one back in the day, but I'd have to say it's like a classic one, uh, very addictive, quite a lot of stages to it, you have to find your best way across, there's no time limit or anything like that. So uh, just do it as quickly as you can, really. Zub, based a little bit on Astro Ball, but more advanced. You control this alien character, um, and you must go up levels, avoid all the uh, aliens there, or they'll knock you down, you'll lose energy, and escape up the top. No coins to uh, get on this one, but the clever bit of this one is, as you uh, lose strength, your... Um, man in the right there in yellow turns into a skeleton and I like that good animation nice and cute uh, a good game would have been a good one to have back in the day or even more recently 
Monopoly, that ancient, ancient game, the property trading game. Uh, there's a few versions of this on the ZX Spectrum, but I picked this one as well. This version also came out on the Commodore Amiga. It's for uh, one to four players, or I think well, one to six players actually, go around the board, exchange properties. The one problem with this is, of course, that Monopoly takes ages and ages and ages to play, and the ZX Spectrum 48K heats up dramatically. So back in the day, I'm not sure many people would have completed it, and there's no save feature being on an 8-bit system. Snakes and Ladders, we covered quite a lot of board games in this uh, top 50. It does what it says on the tin here. Here's me against the amazing dog face. Um, throw the dice and go up ladders and try and avoid snakes. Now, when you get to a ladder, what's unique about this one, it does ask you a question and you can only go up if you get it right. But they're the same questions, like who invented the radio and what was the last state to um, join the USA? The answers are Marconi and Hawaii. So it's only got a limited amount of questions, but okay. Computer Scrabble, you against the computer, you get dished a random amount of letters and you must get them out scoring as much as you can. Now you can cheat on this because if you come up with a word that doesn't exist, the computer does query it, here I am against Fico, and says, um, what, is that a real word in just yes or no? And if you put yes, then suddenly it adds it to its dictionary, so X, Y, Z, K, J would be your word. Maybe it's a type of biscuit, I don't know. But this game is pretty good, it does again what it says on the tin. Drafts Genius, you play against Einstein, and he's a mean, mean player. Drafts is like, um, well, beginner's chess, really. You must get all your pieces to the end of the board and get them to kings and then t take all your opponent's pieces. This plays quite well. What I like about this one is it's all in 3D and there's attention to detail as well. So you've got 3D and you're against Einstein. So as far as drafts go on the spectrum, they couldn't have gone much better than this. Fantastic homebrew, this one by Steve Broad. Merry Christmas from Horace come out in, uh, well, round about 2016, I think. Using the classic character Horace, he must collect Christmas presents. When he collects 10, he goes on to the next level. He starts off on a moving train and then progresses to uh, towns later on. Quite addictive, this one. It's really well coded. I'm a big fan. Merry Christmas from Horace. Horace lives on and always good to see. There'll be a few of these. Super Crap Invaders, I had to review this when, after I saw some screenshots because it's just bizarre. You control Jet Set Willy and he must shoot these aliens like a Space Invaders clone. So it's Jet Set Willy meets Space Invaders and um, it is a bit like patting your head and rubbing your tummy at the same time to try and get into a rhythm with this one. But it, it, it's mad, it's clever, it shouldn't work but for me it actually does. Good stuff. Super Crap Invaders is not a super crap game. Like it. When you draw the aliens, it starts again. Horace to the Rescue, another one by Steve Broad. Now, Horace to the Rescue, the original game, was never ever released. And this is Steve Broad's imagination of what Horace to the Rescue would have been a bit like. Uh, influenced by a hunchback, I would say. Look at my review of that one. So you must avoid all the obstacles, collect the bell at the end of the stage, and then that's that. It gets progressively more and more difficult. Doesn't use a lot of the screen, uh, but that's okay. It's always good to see um, Horace in any sort of guise. Horace to the Rescue 2. This time Steve uses more of the screen in his coding, but same sort of thing again. Uh, get to uh, the end of the screen there, collect all the coins, hit the bell, and then Bob's your auntie, you're um, there to the next one. So more of the same really. Horace to the Rescue 2. Uh, this is better than the original, I would say. Quite addictive again, don't know how many stages there are, but I haven't completed them. So you need more and more practice as you go through. Nice platform game. Super Cycle. Now this game moves quite fast, but it's flawed in quite a number of ways. The first way is it's just so, so easy. Um, you've got plenty of time to do each stage, and because you've got plenty of time to do each stage, it very quickly becomes boring. One of the other flaws is, on some corners, if your bike goes to the extreme right off the screen, it will just return on the left side of the screen as some sort of crazy teleport. But uh, for what it is, it's quite good, it, it's fast, but as I say, deeply flawed game. Horace Minor, another one by Steve Broad, he's trying to do um, Horace meets um, Manic Minor. It's not done as well as Mystic Woods, that trumps it in every department for that, because that's trying to do the same thing. But it, it, it's okay, it uses the graphics from Hungry Horace there, you versus the Park Rangers. And it, it plays similar to, it might as well be Horace to the Rescue 3 to be honest with you. Um, 
Yeah, you have to get the bell instead of the flashing square like Manic Miner has. It needs a bit of tactics, and this is Horace Miner 2, uses more of these like maze graphics from Hungry Horace. It's an improvement over the first one, but again the same sort of thing. If you liked Horace to the rescue, you'd probably like this one as well. If you're looking for a Horace meets Manic Miner clone, then um, Horace in the Mystic Woods is the one to get, because that one is absolute genius. That's not to say these ones aren't bad either aren't good I should say. I like all of the Horus games so far. Excellent stuff. Doctor Who Dalek Attack. Here you are controlling Sylvester McCoy in this platform game. You must rescue all hostages in stage one then you progress to the, the next stage which is in the city of London. In this game if you're good enough you'll meet Daleks, Robo Men, Davros and a whole host of alien nasties. If you like Doctor Who you'll like this one. It moves quite fast I played it with a cheat on originally there because I think you need it to get to the later stages but Doctor Who, Doctor Who, the TARDIS. Horace and the Robot, Robots, this one's by Steve Snake. It's a Berserk clone from the arcades but this time you control Horace and it's the first Horace game we've actually got a gun and can shoot something. Yes, Horace has now come badass. You start off with quite benevolent robots in yellow and the higher your score goes the more evil the robots get in the next stage but it's just explore the maze and survive as long as you possibly possibly can. Good old Horace there. Um, does have some speech in the current micro speech version. Now it's based on this game ZX Berserk which was 36 years earlier than that homebrew I just showed you. It's in uh, machine code I believe or basic code it moves quite slow uh, ZX Berserk is spelt with an S in this version, in the arcade version is spelt with a Z, so I haven't misspelt it um, despite the messages I got after putting it out. The playability is not really there in this game, it's from the er very early 80s, uh, an enemy will lock onto you and quite often it will get you, but still good to see from a Snowja point of view. Zynaps, one of the best horizontal shooters you can actually find on the ZX Spectrum. It's quite hard, as a lot of these were, but it's got lots of colour in it, it moves very very fast, it's got great sound and no colour clash to speak of really. Hold the fire button down, you can collect those um, orb things for um, bonuses and power-ups, but very difficult, but if you put in the time, like all these games, you will be progressing quite a long way. I'm a big fan of Zynaps, terrible on the Commodore Amiga, but absolutely excellent on the Spectrum. Angry Birds Opposition, this is a homebrew based on the um, phone app games early on. It's a scaled down version where it's just like a firing range really like clay pigeon shooting. It gets difficult from more and more level. You must, with the timings you must shoot birds going across. Later stages the birds fire at different angles and the different types of birds to attack but graphically it's good. The sound is good. This is on the 128k. Nice to see Angry Birds finally make it to the ZX Spectrum. Space Invaders, another uh, Space Invaders clone. This one moves pretty fast. Uh, the disadvantage of this one really is, is the lag on it. When you shoot an alien they don't immediately disappear. When you get hit you don't immediately die. So it always seems uh, to be slightly behind on the death row sequence where the action is and it suffers for that quite a bit really. Uh, it's not one of my favourite ones uh, just because of that, that time lag I should say. But nice and colourful. You can tell it's Space Invaders so another 8 bit shooter. Dominoes, taking things back to basics again, you know how dominoes work. You um, are handed out a load of two numbered uh, pieces and you must get them out as quickly as possible. There's a few dominoes games on the ZX Spectrum but this is the best one I think. We might come to a few other ones later on but it's quite unlikely because it's not the most exciting of games and on the commentary I did struggle to make it exciting. So a lot of board games covered in this 50 uh, uh, block and dominoes as well. Technician Ted, it's a Jet Set Willy clone, one has to be said. It's using a lot of the, that coding I think, or very similar coding. It did have two sequels, Technician Ted the Mega Mix and Costa Capers. You control this workman and he must um, complete various tasks throughout the workplace to um, rescue the company. It's a chip factory, that's computer chips and not vision chips. Quite a lot of rooms, um, repetitive music going around. As I say, not as good as Jet Set Willy, but I can see what they're going to do. Uh, Spectral Invaders, another Space Invaders clone. There's a hell of a lot of stuff shooting at you. It's one of the most difficult Space Invaders clones. It's okay, I wouldn't have been disappointed with this one back in the day. As again, not my favourite. They all must be compared to the fantastic game which is Space Raiders and um, none of them are quite as good as that. That one's the most fun. But um, yeah, it's an also ran this one. 
lots of stuff shooting at you. Uh, if they they made that less, it might be a better game. Rockstar Ate My Hamster. Now this game's really unique. You manage a pot group, anyone from one to four um, members, and by doing gigs, practicing and different tours, you must get as much money as you can, recording music, and also doing um, a publicity stunts. These ones are called the Sweaty Pensioners, a random name, not selected by me. In publicity stunts, sometimes your members will die in the most amazing ways. Don't go bankrupt, take your uh, pot group to the top. Manic Mining Robots Day Out. Now this is a bit of a twist, another homebrew. This time you control from Manic Miner, the actual robot that went backward and forward on Central Cavern. A nice game, some of the room names are a little bit rude for my liking, but an interesting one, and I do like the Jet Set Willy or Manic Miner when you control other characters in the game. Very rarely happen, there's a lot of Jet Set Willy mods out there, I'm not too interested in the ones where they're just um, a mixture of what was already there. I like to see new stuff. Alien Command, a quite basic game from the early 80s, I believe. You must protect three of your missile command bases and destroy UFOs as they go across. It goes on forever and ever until you die. You can't shoot all the aliens, so just protect your three bases. Uh, you lose 50 points every time an alien lands. If the explosion kills you, then you are dead. And if you lose all three bases, you are dead. Here I am with just one base left. You need great timing on this. The animation isn't the greatest in the world. A classic game, Barbarian, the Ultimate Warrior. Can't quite controversial at the time because of the cassette box. It's got Wolf and the page three girl Maria Whitaker on, but plays quite well. I never really got on with it too much. You must rescue a princess in uh, by competing in different bouts. There's a special move where you can cut your opponent's head off, which I haven't been able to master. But a very good game. It's got a sequel, which we still haven't come to as of yet. A very good game, a very popular game, as that uh, thing drags me away. Technician Ted the Mega Mix. Uh, it's okay, not quite as good as the original Technician Ted. It's flawed in some ways because you can go into a death spiral, and that means you enter one bit of the screen and die straight away. The, the character just regenerates into that sort of place. Lovely room names. One flew over the cuckoo's nest. You see a, uh, the number one is flying over a cuckoo's nest. That's the joke there. Again, you must um, collect, do various tasks there. The game is slightly bigger than the first one and more difficult, so it is progressing in that form. Battle of the Toothpaste Tubes, an absolutely bizarre game which quite often turned up on the ZX Spectrum. You control this toothpaste tube and you must shoot toothbrushes and destroy toothpaste below and um, false teeth. That's pretty much it really. Um, how they had the nerve to release this as a commercial game, I do not know. It's madness in a game form. What the hell is going on? I don't know. I can't defend it. It's just strange. Bizarre stuff. TT Racer, this is a great game back in the day but hasn't aged particularly well. Comes with lots of um, options, the frame rate isn't great but back in the day it would have been seen as good. You've got to lean the bike round the corners, you're in different races or a whole Grand Prix and you're going to spend most of the time getting a little bit dizzy. It plays a bit like a flight simulator, there's a lot going on, the computers happen to program a lot. So in summary, great game back in the day, not so good now. Good to see though for historic, historic purposes. Panic, a great game this one, from the arcades, Space Panic. You must avoid all these aliens going around the maze, knock a hole in the floor, and when the alien goes to repair that hole, you can get on them and stamp on them and kill them. Once you've killed all three, you go on to the next level. And that is pretty much it. Quite similar to stage three of Horace and the Spiders, which is one of my favorite games of all time. And that's why I like it so much. Lots of different versions of Panic. We might come to some other ones later on down the line. Spitting images, nothing to do with the TV show from the 80s spitting image. You must um, arrange pieces to create um, famous people back in the day. This one's Ronald Reagan. Other people to assemble are Gorbachev, um, I think Alan Sugar's in there as well, and Sir Clive Sinclair. You might have heard of him. Uh, I, I didn't do very well on this game really. Arrange pictures, sometimes a bomb would come out and you need to get rid of that before it destroys your handiwork. But that's about it really. Knight Rider, did 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 great show, a uh, terrible game. You're controlling your Pontiac Firebird along this yellow road. Uh, kits shooting at helicopters, which are endless, and you're trying to track down an enemy base. Once you do, uh, then it turns into a game where 
over the top. You control Michael Knight and he must stealth like get from one side of the room to another. It's nothing to write home about this game. Disappointing because the show was so good. A really good homebrew this to finish us off. It's 4K Race um, by Paolo Ferraris. It won the 2005 mini game competition that was going at the time. You control this Formula One car across seven checkpoints or six checkpoints there. And if you crash into any car, you lose time. And that's pretty much it. But it moves so fast. Animation is so smooth. Sprites scale really, really well. Uh, lots to like about this game. And I really, really, really like it. Excellent stuff. So I hope you liked having a look at that block of games this time round. Uh, do look at the other similar videos to see what we've already covered. Thanks for watching again. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so because it keeps things uh, running really, keeps me active. Until next time, take great care of yourself and a very fond goodbye. Goodbye.